Reach out and grab the way that you move. Turn with me to 630. 630. America the beautiful. Y'all stand with me as we celebrate this 4th of July weekend. 630. America the beautiful.
I was a wretch. I was a wretch. I remember who I was before Jesus. Amen. I remember who I was.
proverbial phrase, when life gives you lemons, you give them the name. In my life situation, you know, the lemons that are given to me or allowed in my life or, or, or dropped at my doorstep, um, I have to give that to God. I have to, to give it to Him from a standpoint of and allowing Him to, to, to bring that sweetness in, into my message, to bring His hand, His fixes, His abilities, not mine. My Bible says with man things are in, or things are impossible, but with God all things are possible. Amen. And, and so I let Him into that to bring possibility. I let Him I give Him my lemons. But sometimes lemons are given to us, if you would, or allowed. They're still allowed by God, but sometimes it, it's it's somebody else throws and hits me. You know, as I was giving my last week, I said, you won't throw it at you can. But sometimes somebody else throws it at you. Somebody else brings that sourness or that bitterness into your life. Somebody else causes it, if you would. And <clears throat> when they cause that pain, and so, anybody ever been hurt by somebody else? Come on. <laughs> All day long. And so, you know, we... we there's, there's, that, that's going to happen. It's inevitable. I thought about this on our journey, and that's kind of why I put our journey still, we're still on our journey this year. And, and forgive us, because inevitably, somebody's going to hurt you. Somebody's going to say something to you. Somebody's going to do something to you. They're going to stab you in the back. They're going to cause pain in your life. They're going to cause hurt in your life. They're going to cause difficulty in your life. And it's going to come in the form of a person and what they do. And so you and I need to understand that that's going to bring up a, a scenario in my life that, that where I have to make a choice. I have to choose whether or not I forgive them. I have to choose whether or not I let this fester. I let this continue on in my life. I have to choose whether or not I forgive them. Now, Jesus, when he gave us the, the, model, the great model prayer in Matthew 6, I want us to see that first. I want you to see. Matthew 6, he said this in verse 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now, that's part of that, that great model prayer. I want to read it to you in the Living Bible. It says it like this. And forgive us our sins just as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. Now leave that up there. Right? Forgive us our sins. I'm good with that. Say amen. I'm good. I want God to forgive me. I want God to, 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 to pour his mercy out upon me and his grace out upon me. Man, I am all over the first part of that passage. Forgive me where I mess up because I mess up. Forgive me of my sins, God, because I sure do know how to sin, God. I have messed up more times than I can imagine. And, 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 and so, God, I need you to forgive me. Come on. Who's going to get in the boat with me? I need you to forgive me. And, and, and then he goes on to say, forgive me of my sins, God, just as I have forgiven those who hurt me, who stab me in the back, who say things about me, who hurt my feelings and hurt my family, and God, you, you won't. Wait, wait, wait. I'm good with the first part. Amen. I'm, I'm perfect with the first part. That second part, I struggle with. That second part. I don't like, God, you didn't even need to say that. And God said, whoa, whoa, again. Yes, man. Forgive me of my sins. And forgive us of our sins just as we have forgiven those who sin against us. You and I have a choice. You and I have a choice. And that choice is called forgiveness. 
you say, well, don't I have a choice? Well, it's to forgive or not to forgive. But if I choose not to forgive, I'm going to put another word in that category. I'm going to put another word that describes what, what happens when I choose not to forgive. It causes bitterness. It causes bitterness. Bitterness begins to grow and fester when I choose not to forgive. It's a boat of bitterness when you're hurt and you're wronged. And, 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 and you know, the, the, the truth is, guys, on that boat of bitterness, you know, nine times out of ten, is that not the boat we choose to get on? We've got two boats docked, if you would. You can choose and have to choose when somebody hurts you and somebody will hurt you. Somebody will say something about you. Somebody will do something to stab you and come on. Amen. You will face this. They have already faced it many times this year. But you will face this. And so at, at that point, when somebody hurts you and, and life gives you a limit because of what somebody else did to you, a hypothetical, you have to make a choice. Which boat do I get on? Do I get on the boat of forgiveness or do I get on the boat of bitterness? It's my choice. It's forgiveness or unforgiveness. You can call it what you want to call it. But I can tell you that this unforgiveness will root up bitterness. This unforgiveness will cause you to be chained to that circumstance, chained to that hurt, chained to that past in your life. Whereas the boat of forgiveness, it changes everything. You find God's sweetness. You find God's mercies. You find God's grace. You find God's healing in your life. I mean, literally, guys, it changes everything. Hebrews 12 and 15 says this, guys. Huh? I didn't give it to you. Turn over to Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Because it talks about that rooting up of that of that bitterness. It says, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this many become defiled. He says, be careful. Be careful. Choose the right boat. Because, because unforgiveness is, is, is rooted in bitterness and the bitterness begins to uh, begins to stew and, and as that bitterness begins to stew you know and, and what, what the author of Hebrews is saying here is he says be careful that you, you, you don't fall short of the grace of God lest any root of bitterness and so you let that root of bitterness hang in, you choose this boat because, because let's be honest when somebody hurts you, what do you want to do? Come on. Hurt them back. That's exactly right. When somebody wrongs you, you want to get even with them. Come on. That's just the human nature. That's human nature. That's just kind of how it is. Somebody does me back, I want, I want, I want to get back at them. But maybe, maybe some of us aren't as, as vocal as some would be, but, but the truth somebody hurts you or hurts you now and, and you know you want you, you know you, and, and so here's the natural way is to choose this boat of unforgiveness of bitterness because I want to get and especially when they do something bad to you you know the last thing I want to do is let you off the hook because if I'm in this boat of unforgiveness, if I'm in this boat of, of, of bitterness, if I'm in this boat of, 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 of you know, not, not the forgiving boat, but this boat, I'm still holding you accountable. I still have you on the hook for it. Right? If I look this way, you know who's on the hook? There's only one person still on the hook at this point, and that's you. That's you. But, but the natural sense or the natural the natural way is to is to hang out there in that in that bitterness. Because it feels good to get in. Because it feels good to stew about it. 
It feels good to pick up the phone and call somebody about it and, 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 and just slam that other person. It feels good to, to hold on to my bitterness. It feels good to hold on to my heart. I don't want to do away with it. You know what Jesus said in Matthew 6? You keep going down there in verse 14. He says, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Look at verse 15. But if you do not forgive men with their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Okay, God, that's not fair. That's not fair, God. Uh, God, don't you know I'm over here and I'm in this boat of, of bitterness? I'm in this boat of, of unforgiving? And, and, and God, because they hurt me, they stabbed me in the back, they talked about me, they hurt my family. God, don't you know what they did? And it's not fair, God, that you would look to me and say, Ken, I expect you to forgive them of their trespasses, of their sins, of the way they hurt you. I need you out of that boat, into this boat, because if you don't get out of that boat and get into this boat, I'm not going to forgive you. Uh-oh. Did he really go there? Somebody say amen. He did. He did. You say, oh, no, preacher, I, I'm hanging out here. Look what it's doing to you. If you do not forgive men their trespasses, their hurts of you, their slamming you, what they cause the pain in your life, you, you fill in the gap. If you don't forgive men their trespasses, then it says, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. You say, but preacher, I'm saved. Say me. I mean, if you're near saved, say me. Blood ball, man, name written in the Lamb's book of life. If today is your day, you're going to heaven. Say me. Know that. I'm forgiven, preacher. Because he was, we sing that song. Because he was forsaken. I, I know, I know, I said, I'm forgiven. So why do I need Get back over to my boat because I'm forgiven. But, but how many of you sin? Hold on. How many of you sin a bunch? Come on. Uh oh. How many of you would say, I need him? Yeah, get both feet up. How many of you would say, I need him to forgive me? I need his mercy and his grace and all. And you say, but what, what, is that, what does that keep from happening? Unforgiveness in my life, bitterness in my life. When I hold somebody else accountable for the sin that they committed against me, when, 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 when I won't forgive them, God says, Ken, I'm not going to forgive you. And you say, wait a minute, I'm his child. God, you got to forgive me. God says, no, you forgive him, I'll forgive you. And, and understand this, when, when, when I sin in my life and there is not forgiveness for that sin in my life, it's not talking about my sonship. It's talking about my fellowship. It's talking about I'm breaking my fellowship with God. He turns from me. I need his face in my life. I need his presence. Say amen. I need him. And guys, you don't have him in that moment. You don't have him. Truth is, you came in this morning in this boat. You 
genuine in this boat. I know people in this boat right now that have been in this boat years. Years. Because they won't let go of it. They won't. You, know, you, you say, preacher, how do you get from this boat to this boat? Because I need Jesus in my life. I need his grace. I need his mercy. I need his forgiveness. I need his presence in my life. How do I do? Here's what you got. Everybody look this way. Admit you're hurt. Admit you're hurt. You know, sometimes some of some of us have been in this boat, some of us we don't even know we're in this boat. Because you know, the, the, the Christian thing is not to is not to hold a grudge. You know, I get that. God says don't do that. And and, and I'm a child of God. I, I don't I don't admit it. Have any of you when somebody's hurt you have said this, but we didn't bother me. I'm good. Um, and the truth is, it was eating you alive, wasn't it? Because they, you couldn't believe, they didn't admit it. Admit that you're hurting. Admit that you're in that boat of bitterness. Admit where you are. And then make a choice. Make a choice. I choose, number one, admit, God, I'm in this boat. I don't want to be in this boat. God, I want to change this boat. I want to, God, admit that and then make a choice. I choose to release the person that hurt me. I choose to release. I'm going to let the person that hurt me off the hook, so to speak. I'm going to let it go. Well, let them, I release them. And you think, man, if I do that, preacher, then, then, then you know, if I, if, I, if I let them go, if I release them, and, and you say, where are you releasing them to? I'm releasing them to God. Come on. I let God handle this. Remember, last week we had to bring our lemons, and we had to lay them on the altar, and we had to say, God, I trust you. God, I need you. God, fix this, and God, take care of this. I'm releasing my pain, my circumstance, my hurt, my stab in the back. When they did it to me, I'm admitting it, and I'm releasing it to God. God, I let go. Because if I don't let go of it, you know where I'm chained that one? I'm still chained to that person who hurt me. Come on. I'm still in this boat, but if I don't let that go, I'm still connected to that person. I release it. You see, what? I think one of the reasons we struggle so much right here is because when we, when we think about somebody that hurt me, a lot of times when people hurt you, they were people you trusted. They were people that, that you thought you could count on, that you thought were, were, were had your back. When you release them, it's not saying you trust them. Come on. Okay, I trust you again. No. I ain't got this knife out yet. Where, where, where you, you stabbed me in the back instead of having them. I don't have that, but I release you to God. I'm going to let God handle that because I'm not going to be chained to you. It doesn't mean I have to trust you because trust is earned. Come on. Trust is earned. You know, you take a marriage when one spouse is unfaithful and you let that spouse be unfaithful and that spouse comes back and says, oh, I'm sorry, I want to fix this. And you say, okay, I forgive you. And I let that go. But that doesn't mean you trust them right then. That trust has got to be built back up. Come on. That's the earth. Has to be earned. Is it possible? It is possible. Because God's amazing and God can do the impossible. Say it again. He can do the impossible. But you got to admit it. You got to release it. And then if you look at Matthew 18, did I give you that one? There you go. Verse 21, it says this.
Peter came to Jesus. Peter comes to Jesus. And he asks this question. Admit it, release. Okay. How many times, God? What if I keep hurting and keep hurting and keep hurting? How many times do I forgive God? So Peter came to him and he said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Don't put 22 up there yet. Up to seven times. So it's a, the complete number. Is, is that how many times, Jesus, that, that I do this? You know, I imagine Peter was thinking, and I imagine the other disciples are thinking, man, you admitted it, you're in this boat, you've forgiven, you release that. How many times do we do this? Is it seven times, God? I imagine everybody's going, wow, man, seven times. That's awesome. That's some, you know, Peter's probably thinking, man, I, oh, that's something spiritual. I, I, I'm, I'm Joe Christian right there. That's amazing. Seven times. Jesus says this in verse 22. He said, I don't say to you seven times. I say to you seven times seven. Here's what Jesus said. Everybody look this way. However many times it takes, you forgive. Because when you don't forgive, and you hold on to it, and you're bitter, and, and it's breaking fellowship because you haven't forgiven. You're the one that's losing out. Jesus says, I, here's what he's saying. However many times it takes for you to get out of this boat, get in this boat. I many. I know that's hard. I many. I know it's a struggle. And I love this picture, guys, that God gives us. Because here's the picture He wants you to do. When you struggle with this boat, here's what I want you to do. I want you to turn and look at that. I want you to turn and think about His forgiveness for you. Because a lot of times, guys, it's all about where in this boat, it's all about what? What did he do for you? You know, we've kind of civilized, if you would, the cross. We've kind of softened up the cross. It was a, it was a, 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 a method used that was so destructive to the body. I mean, obviously, yeah, it was going to kill them, but, but just so abused. I mean, so outrageous, they outlawed it. They outlawed it because it was such a horrific way for somebody to die. asking you to do when this happens, to come from this boat to this boat, is nothing compared to what you've asked him to do when he died for your sins. No, not even close. Not even, come on, not even close. The pain, the separation, the agony, the suffering that he did because the wage of sin is what helped me out? Death. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. He knew that you couldn't fix it. He came and fixed it for you. He knew that you couldn't pay your debt. So God himself came and paid your debt, your sin debt. When he let them crucify him on the on old rugged cross, he died for my sins that I might live. Guys, what he did for me can't touch anything that's in my boat. Come on. So to think that somehow I would hold somebody else more accountable than I hold myself amazes me. Because I, I hate to burst your bubble. And we're going to close. But I hate to bust your bubble. But let me show you. 
tall from the figure of this little white glass to the little circle. For what I will to do, I don't do it. I do not practice. But what I hate, I do that. Look at verse 16. And if then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that that is good. But now it's no longer I who do it, but the sin that... See what Paul's saying? Paul's saying, I am a born-again child of God. I am saved. I am blood-bought. But, and, but, but I, I royally, what, help me out, mess up. He says, it's no longer I, but the sin that dwells in me. Keep going. For I know that in me, that is my flesh, nothing good dwells for me. For to will is present, for to will is present with me. But how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will to do, that I practice. Here's truth that everybody needs to understand. It. Every single one of us in here are still wretched. Every single one of us in here still know how to sin. Come on, because you still, you got to say, you got a new heart. You, you, your, your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You're born again. You're blood bought, but you're still flesh. Come on. And you still know how to sin. Say me. Still mess up every now and then. You're not perfect. You're not perfect. I hate to bust your bubble. Nobody in this room is perfect. Everybody in here is flawed. Everybody is flawed. Give us that next passage. Oh, wretched man, this is Paul. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Oh, wretched man that I am. Look how he finishes it. I thank God. You want to know how to get from this boat to this boat? You want to know how to get from, from, from miserableness chained to your past? You want to know how to get out of this root of, of bitterness, this unforgiveness that's here? You want to step into this boat here of forgiveness, of his mercy, of his grace? And you say, but preacher, I came because it's just me. Let him do it. I thank God that I can get here through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. He can fix it. You got to let him. Because you will get stabbed in the back. You will. Have somebody talk about you. You will. Somebody, somebody, hey, somebody might even hurt you and they didn't even know they hurt you. And you're over here holding them accountable for something they don't even know. And you're bitter and you're mad and you're angry. Let it go. Come on. Let it go. Let it go. Because it's holding you back and you back figure it. Let it go and say, Jesus, help me. Watch this, guys. I promise you, if you'll reach into his hand, he'll take your hand and help you into this boat of forgiveness. Come on. Let's pray. Pray with me. His heads are bowed. And eyes are closed. Oh. is your moment. Maybe today you find yourself in that place of unforgiveness. You find yourself in that place of bitterness. You are hurt. Somebody hurt you. Maybe you didn't even know or they didn't even know they hurt you. But you've been holding on to that. You have been harboring that. Admit it. It's eating you up. And let it go. Let it go. He forgave you. Why can't you forgive? Because
Because if you don't forgive, he's not going to forgive you. You say, that ain't fair, preacher. That's him. That's his way. Let it go. Let it go. Come on, find a place to let it go. You say, I can't let him help you. You don't have it all together. You're not perfect. Let it go. Let it go. Father, wow. Thank you for your word today. Thank you for this message on our journey this year. But there's going to be times in my life when people hurt me. Times in my life when people say and do mean things to us. I got to let them go. I can't hold on to that because that hinders me. I can't hold on to that because that stops me. I can't hold on to that because it puts me dead in my tracks. It causes bitterness. It causes broken fellowship. I can't hold on to that anymore. I got to let it go. Holy God, find the people today who are willing to let it go, to move forward for your glory and your honor, Lord. And an amazingness, an amazingness because we get your grace. We love you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people say, amen and amen. I'm going to get you to stand. And I'm going to ask you to come. I'm going to ask you to come. And, and here's what I want you to do. You may come in this boat of unforgiveness. You may walk up here having to come in in this boat of bitterness. Let it go. Let it go at his altar. Let it go as we stand and sing.